I'd like to think of myself as a good neighbor. I live by the motto, you don't have to be friends with your neighbors, just friendly. I make sure I learn their names. I keep my conversations polite, minimal, and usually about the weather. I break down my cardboard boxes, and I take in my trash cans in a timely manner. And for the most part, I keep to myself. I've been living in my current apartment for over a year. It's a pretty typical SoCal design with a larger house in front and two apartments above garages in the back. There's even a little studio tucked away downstairs next to the garages. We all share a grassy courtyard reserved for barbecues and small parties. And you see, this is my first big girl apartment. I rented by myself without a roommate or a boyfriend. It's just me and my six-year-old daughter and our cat. <laughs> the neighbor I have directly next to me is Lori. She is nice and quiet and works from home and she has three indoor cats. She's the cat lady. <laughs> the studio below is a revolving door of tenants and is currently inhabited by a sweet 18-year-old student named Liz. She is constantly planting a garden and then killing said garden. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest residents on the property live in the front house, a couple named Amber and Bill. Amber is about my age, mid-30s. Bill is my father's age, around 60. <laughs> he is retired and keeps a tidy yard and loves his young girlfriend. Sometimes I see Amber jogging on the street, hair pulled back and sweaty. She's wearing little shorts that say juicy or pink across the butt. <laughs> Bill is following dutifully behind, walking their little dog. Sometimes Amber sunbathes in the courtyard, covered in oil, lying on her belly, bikini top undone. Bill will always bring her out a cold beer or parliament light. She once told me the story of how they met. Bill's brother was married to Amber's aunt. She grew up calling him Uncle Bill. <laughs> when she turned 21, she announced to her family that she had been in love with him since she was a little girl. They've been together ever since. They are a strange but loyal couple. <laughs> Amber and I have a very passive-aggressive relationship, sometimes aimed at my personal life. You date really good-looking guys. Thanks, Amber. I mean, it's so surprising. <laughs> or, why do you date guys your age? I mean, you should find an older man, one that can take care of you. Sometimes her barbs are aimed at my cat. You know your cat has worms. She's always covered in them. They're really contagious. I wouldn't, see, I wouldn't be surprised if your daughter has them already. Really? I'll get her checked out. I acted concerned, but was sure my cat didn't have worms, because just like any asshole cat, Gloria was sure to stick her butt in my face on a daily basis. <laughs> she's always hungry. She has worms. I'm not saying you don't feed her, but she's always clawing at my back door at 4 a.m. when I get up to make my smoothies. I just feed her anyway. I don't know what else to do. Huh. Well, that's funny because every morning at 4 a.m., she wakes me up to go outside. I'm now growing slightly enraged. I have been woken up every morning for, at 4 a.m. for the past year because this lady feeds my cat. <laughs> it's Pavlovian. You're the reason why she wakes me up at 4 a.m. We're both smiling, but there's a tension. Oh, honey, I don't mean to attack you. I just want to talk. Do you want a beer or a glass of wine? We never get to hang out. She slowly twirls a gold necklace around her finger. <sighs> um, sure, wine would be nice. Bill comes from out of nowhere with a plastic chair and a cold glass of Chardonnay as if he's been waiting patiently all along. <laughs> Hey, Bill, will you roll a joint? Want to smoke a little pot, sweetie? Uh, I guess. Sure, that would be nice, too. I am definitely crossing the boundaries of friendly neighborhood behavior, but I feel that this is Amber's grand gesture for always being slightly cunty towards me. 
You know, Bill and I used to live in your apartment before we moved into the front house, and I swear there is something about the way this courtyard is structured, but you can hear everything that comes from up there. I mean, <laughs> Bill and I used to fuck in your bathtub. <laughs> from that bathroom, you can hear it all the way down in the courtyard. She takes a drag from the joint. I am stoned and a wee bit white wine buzzed. I can feel cool prickles move up my spine and down my arms. I am silent and Bill has mysteriously disappeared. Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for a while and you seem like the kind of gal I can say anything to. Of course, Amber, go ahead. <laughs> well, we can all hear you fucking. <laughs> oh, I am reeling. I begin to do the math. Technically, I only get to fuck two days a week. The days my daughter is with her dad. Out of 168 hours in a week, I get to get down for maybe four of those hours, conservatively. That's like 2% of the week. How can everyone hear me porking in that small window of time? Math and ratios and science and stuff. Amber continues, I mean, last Sunday, you were really going at it. And Liz had her whole family visiting, her mom, her dad, her brother. She's still a virgin, you know, and they're Catholics. Oh my God. And you know Ben, the one that used to live in the studio? Yeah, the, the one that moved out last summer? He used to call you Suzanne the Screamer. And when uh, guys hear that stuff, they, you know, she makes the crude jacking off gesture. <laughs> Suzanne the screamer, no wonder his girlfriend never looked at me. And she didn't stop there. Lori can hear you through the wall. You know you share that wall. She's always asking me if that guy you're dating has a magic cock. <laughs> Ugh, gross. I'm flushed, I'm dying. I had no idea. Honestly, I'm mortified. Yeah, right, you knew. Sometimes you do it with your front door open, just a screen door is closed. My mind races back. Do I? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Come on, you had no idea. No, really, no idea. I swear to God, none. Sometimes we'll be out here smoking cigs and we have to go inside. It makes me uncomfortable. And you know, turns Bill on. She takes a long drag off her parliament light. Oh, no, 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 not Bill, not balding, wrinkly Uncle Bill. <laughs> I've been blindsided, mentally heading to my safe place. I am mortified. I am so, so sorry. I never meant to make anyone uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, don't be mortified. At least you're having fun. We all like sex. Just close your windows and keep it down. You are really loud. So you all have been talking about my loud sex for the past year. My mind races back. There are 365 days in a year. How many of those hours and how many of those days have I been obnoxious? Apparently enough to warrant this conversation. Yeah, everyone asks me to confront you about it. You're such a cool chick, I knew you'd take it well. Wow, uh, should I apologize to Lori and Liz? slowly running her finger along the edge of her wine glass. I don't think it's necessary. Just don't do it anymore. <laughs> uh, will you tell them that you talked to me and let them know I am truly sorry? I need to go inside. Thanks for letting me know, Amber. You're a really good neighbor. I barely make it out of the chair. I am the epitome of embarrassment. My hands shaking. I feel gross. I thank her for the wine and the pot and make it to my apartment. Of course, I'm glad I got it out. Don't worry, you're fine. Sex is nothing to be ashamed of, she screams after me. <laughs> I close the door and collapse to the ground. I go fetal. Curled up, I first text my former downstairs neighbor. I am so sorry, I did not know you could hear me having sex. Second, I send out a mass text to my closest friends. OMG, I was just told I'm the loud sex neighbor, Suzanne the Screamer. <laughs> then I update my Facebook status with, I just found out I'm that neighbor. 
a comment immediately pops up and simply says, loud sex. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> I then call the young gentleman I'm dating, the one with the magic cock. My voice is a whisper, because they can hear everything you know. <laughs> oh my God, I'm the loud sex neighbor. They heard us last Sunday. Liz and her whole family was over, and they heard us every time. Those Catholics must think I'm a huge slut. <laughs> really? <laughs> All I hear is his voice swelling with pride. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm coming over. I remained in that tiny whispering ball for a few minutes. A nice, cold panic attack had settled over me. Smoking pot was a bad idea. <laughs> Being stoned left me ill-prepared for the amount of shame I felt. I lived to be the friendly, quiet neighbor, but instead, instead I just made everyone really uncomfortable. When walking my daughter to the park, do they secretly shake their finger at me? When I get the mail in the afternoon, do they mutter whore under their breath? <laughs> what is the proper protocol? Do I bake sorry I'm the loud sex neighbor cookies and leave tiny packages on each doorstep? <laughs> Starbucks gift cards? <laughs> do I now sneak the boys in through the alley only at night? Surprisingly, all my friends laughed it off. They all said great sex is a gift, few enjoy. I should be proud of myself. They all had similar loud sex bad neighbor stories to relate. A badge of kinky honor, virtually patting me on the back. I guess I'm lucky all my friends are just a bunch of beautiful perverts. <laughs> I didn't get an eviction notice the next day for being a wanton hussy. No one spray painted tart on my door. I still talk about the weather with my neighbors and let out the occasional orgasmic scream but just not as loud. Suzanne Hoyam, everybody.